If you want a quality Cerakote job, it's essential that you understand the different considerations for curing, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. We're here at Ultimate Reloader in the Ultimate Reloader Pro Cerakote shop. I've got my Built American ovens behind me. I just wanna mention right from the get-go, that if you use the UR5 code, you're gonna save 5% on Built American. These ovens are absolutely top notch. We're gonna talk about in this video some of the features they have that are gonna help you do a great job curing Cerakote. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a couple charts that are gonna outline all of the specifics for curing metals, like a rifle chassis or barrel to action or Glock slide, or polymers, and scopes like a Glock frame or a rifle scope that you're Cerakoting. This chart right here is something that you might want to print out and put on the wall. Uh, we've got the different types of Cerakote and we've got the curing temperature and the curing time. There's some other considerations I'll mention here as well. So H series is the bulk of what we do here at Ultimate Reloaders. Very versatile, all purpose Cerakote. It is an oven cure. We're going to cure typically for metals at 250 degrees and for two hours. For E-Series, we're gonna up that temperature to 300 degrees and cure for just one hour. F-Series is all new. Cerakote just came out with this new coating product uh, within this last year. It's gonna be 250 degrees Fahrenheit and it only takes 15 minutes. Here's the special consideration, is that you need to make sure that the part is up to temperature. In this case, 250 degrees. There is not enough time to do a complete soak of the part and to ensure that, you know, if it's a thick metal part that it gets fully up to temperature and then the Cerakote has time to cure at that optimal temperature. So for metal, you could use something like a non-contact laser thermometer just to double check if you want. 15 minutes obviously is four times as fast as H-series, so that's pretty cool and I can't wait to try this stuff. Okay. C-Series and Micro Slick are both air cure and they both have actually the same considerations around curing. 45 to 60 minutes for attack free cure where minimal handling can take place, 24 hours for a partial cure, and then five days for a full cure. Okay, so if we move from metal, which is essentially for those bake finish uh, products, full temperature, we're gonna want to alter that for polymers and rifle scopes. We just published a video showing you how to Cerakote a rifle scope. A lot of attention to detail with masking, a different type of scuffing instead of blasting. And then the cure temperature is another super important part of that. Okay, so we have highlighted here in yellow the things that change when we go to a polymer or something like a rifle scope or similar. H series is gonna be 150 degrees to 180 degrees. For a Glock frame, I might go up to 180, but for a rifle scope, I'm gonna keep that down at 150 because I wanna do anything that I can do to protect the delicate electronics, rubber parts, and so on and so forth. Polymer, plastic, that kind of thing. So 150 to 180 degrees at two hours. E-series is gonna be the same temperature, 150 Fahrenheit to 180 Fahrenheit, and also will be two hours. F-series, we're gonna to wanna to make sure the part is at 180 degrees so that it's stabilized at that temperature. And that's gonna take a full hour, which is half the time. Again, a great savings for the, for the F-Series. Again, with C-Series or Micro Slick, if we apply that to polymer or related parts, we're gonna have the 45 to 60 minute tack-free, 24 hours partial cure, and five days full cure. Okay, so that is kind of the overview of the different curing processes and schedules. Uh, next, I wanna talk about the oven specifics, right? Because there are different features and components for the oven that will make a big difference in a quality cure on your Cerakoted parts. So the first thing you wanna make sure is that you have adequate interior space. There's enough room for the air to move around kind of between the parts that are curing and so that you can get the parts in and out without them touching each other. We can't let anything touch uh, until it's fully cured. You're also gonna wanna have convection action. So these BAE0200 ovens have a circulating fan 
And what that does is it takes the hot air, which is gonna to wanna to rise to the top or sit where those heating elements are, and it's gonna kind of stir that around to make sure that we have a uniform temperature. If we have a really long rifle chassis or rifle bar barrel hanging in there, the muzzle end will be more or less the same temperature as the breech end, for instance. And then we also want covered oven elements. These oven elements radiate heat and they get really hot. And if we don't have covers, that direct radiation will cause hot spots on our parts. And we don't want that. We want the air to do its job, transferring thermal energy to the part and to hold it at temperature. We don't want that direct radiation if we can avoid that. And again, this is the Built American BAE 0200. UR5 discount coat saves you 5%, not only on this oven, but other ovens and other booths, anything at Built American. Okay, so another key consideration for a quality cure is your application timing. So using an H series example, you're gonna to wanna to hit it with your first coat, and then between a particular portion of your part getting the first coat, you're gonna want a about five minutes until you come back and hit it a second time in that same spot. And if you've got a bunch of parts that are racked and you're circulating them through, you can just kind of keep going on a rotational basis through those parts and apply the coating. If you're doing a very small test panel, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that it has flashed to the point where the surface is not glossy. It's kind of more of that matte finish. So if I'm doing H series one coat, flash five minutes approximately, coat two, flash five minutes, coat three, and then you've got your pre-cure flash, which is a full 15 minutes. This is important, we'll talk about a specific problem that can happen here in a second, just to make sure that all of the solvent has its breathing time and can do any evaporation that needs to happen before it goes in the oven. Then we put it in the oven and based on the charts that I just showed you, we follow that temperature and timing. Okay, so one of the big problems that we want to avoid relating to curing is what's called solvent pop. What can happen is if too much solvent is trapped between the different coats of Cerakote, you know, between the surface and the substrate, if there's too much solvent in there, it can expand and pop. And so I have a picture here of extreme solvent pop that actually is probably a different phenomenon. So I'm kind of looping this all together. If you have this sort of bumpy appearance, whether it be a couple of dimples here and there or a real extreme case like this, it could be inadequate flash time, right? Between coats or the pre-oven 15 minute flash was not observed. It could be contaminated product. It could be expired product. That's what this was actually. This is, was, I think, uh, two and a half years old or something like that it had totally expired and then I had this texture form. Looked fine when I sprayed it, but in the oven this dimpling pattern uh, produced itself and when I got it out I was a little bit shocked. Easy remedy, just blasted the part again in the sandblaster, went through and recoated it with non-expired product and it was good to go. Some of this type of dimpling or even fish eye effects can also be water or oil in the air supply. Oil or other greases are usually the culprit if you've got something like a fish eye, but water in your air supply is a big problem and that's why you wanna properly engineer your air system. The compressor, the supply lines, the traps, the air dryer, uh, the regulator, and how the lines are run, and then also different drain areas. Anytime you sweep down, you want that water to go to a collection point and then tee out of the side. And that way every once in a while you can come by, let some air out and drain any air that has made it that far through the system. Here in our shop, we haven't had any moisture get to the spray booth and that's awesome. Okay, so there you go. Kind of the basics of curing Cerakote. Quite a few different things we wanna keep in mind. Uh, you can always go to Cerakote's application guides, which are available online in PDF form. Uh, you could take the advanced applicator training or the basic applicators training at Cerakote headquarters. Lots of different ways to get trained up. But hopefully, if you're applying Cerakote currently or want to learn how to, this has been helpful. Do you have curing considerations for Cerakote that you've discovered and that you observe when you go through the process? 
please drop a comment and we'll have that discussion down in the comments section. One more plug for Built American. This gear is absolutely awesome. If you go to the website and use the UR5 code, you'll save 5% on your entire order. So if you're looking for top-notch equipment, look no further than Built American. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.